Hey guys, today I'm here to teach one of the most asked questions that I get when it comes to scrapbooking, which is how do you resize your photos for your scrapbooks? So there are a lot of little things that I want to cover in this video today. I felt like it needed to be a video because I think that it's easier to learn some of this stuff visually. So some of the stuff that we're going to cover, um, general tips for resizing, how do I get photos that are the perfect sizes for all my different pocket pages in my scrapbook with just one printer. Um, also how to create a grid. So like this kind of thing where it's one big photo but cut into different pieces that match perfectly for um, pocket pages. And then a little bit about why I love my wide format printer because I've talked a lot about how I'm obsessed with it and how I use it all the time but I want to get into the specifics of why it's pretty much the only printer I need. Um, a little bit about printing full page photos, printing collages, and how to add text to your photos before you print them out. So ready? Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to run you through the general basic process of how I resize my images in Photoshop before I print them. So the first thing I'm going to do is click File and New, and I'm going to create a new um, image that is 13 by 19 inches and then 300 pixels. And the reason why I pick those things is because 13 by 19 is the size of my printer paper. So this is going to be the full size image that prints out. And then all of the other images on top of it can be the actual size that they'll end up being when they're cut out. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So this is the size of my printer paper. I always just stick with 300 um, pixels or 300 DPI because that is just the standard size for good quality. So I picked out a couple pictures ahead of time. And so on this one, I wanna make this one a nine by 12 because that's the maximum size that you can print out a photo or that's the maximum page size for the messy book. So I'm gonna crop it and then I'm going to check the size and see it's still on 72 pixels. So I'm gonna change that to 300 and then change this to nine. So it's nine inches by 12 inches. Click okay. And now it's the perfect size, but I'm gonna turn it to the side before I copy and paste it. So I just push edit and then cut. And then I go over to this new untitled image and I push edit and then paste. And then I just move that to where I want it on the page. That looks good. And then that, you know, once this big 13 by 19 paper prints out, then that picture of the pink house is going to be nine by 12 inches perfectly. So I can just cut it out with my scissors and just throw it in the messy book. So next I'm gonna take a couple more pictures and resize them different sizes for the different page protectors in the book. So with this one, I think I want to do a three by three inch square. So I'm just going to crop it. And then again, I'm going to go to image size and just check it to make sure that it's the three by three inches and 300 pixels so that it all matches up. Okay, so that one, I'm going to cut and then go over to this blank image and paste it. And then I kind of, I like to just line them up where there's a little bit of space in between each one, a little bit of white space so that it's easier for me to cut them out. Cause I usually use scissors just because um, this big printer paper is a little bit too big for my um, paper cutter. So I'm getting rid of these images from before. And then I'm finding here another one from Charleston, one of my little friends. And then this one, let's say I want to make this three by four to fit a different page. So I'm gonna move it so that I feel like it's the perfect crop of her cute little face. And then I'm going to check the size to make sure it's what we want it to be again. There, it's all resized. And then I just click this tool to do the cut and paste action again. So sometimes when I'm getting them ready, in a new, on a new page like this, I'll do like one um, row of three by fours and one row of three by threes, just so that they're not like, if they're like this, then they're kind of uneven. 
so I just kind of keep them separated. And if you plan out ahead of time, you can fit the most possible images on your page, obviously, because you can figure out how they're gonna kind of Tetris together. There's another cute picture. I'm gonna say I wanna do this one three by three, so I'm just gonna crop it. And change that size, and then I'm going to outline it and paste it. This one I'll put in the three by three row. And then on this last one, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm going to add text to it. So down here I can control what color my text is. I want it to be white. Um, and I'm just going to start um, typing on my picture. I have a font selected right here. And I think I'm just gonna put hashtag TGIF. I want that to be a little bit bigger. Yeah. Then I'll just place it where I want it on the image and then flatten that. And then just like all the other photos, I'm gonna go to the image size and make sure that it's three inches by three inches and then 300 on the resolution. And then I'm going to cut it and paste it. Oops, cool, and then put it into its spot. So if this were a normal day where I was um, trying to get as many pictures as possible, I would probably fill the entire page. I hate wasting paper, so I always try to plan it out so that I have um, the most possible images on each piece of paper. Um, and then if you're happy with what you have, all you have to do is flatten the image, make sure it's yeah, all the way flattened, and then we'll just print it out with our Canon printer, and I will show you next what I do from there. So a couple of quick tips about printing your photos. So first of all, always make sure to select the highest quality. This is a really big deal because if you accidentally leave it on low quality, then your image could print out with like lines on it, or if the color ever seems really off, that's probably what the problem is. Um, the second thing is to always make sure and select the correct type of paper that you're using. So we always use this Canon Pro Luster paper. It's my favorite paper because the color is beautiful and it's matte. It's really easy to write on the photos with a pen. So make sure that you select the correct type because if it's wrong, it can really affect the quality too. And then the last thing is to always make sure that you select the correct paper size. Because if I started, like I actually did start printing this at first and it was the wrong paper size. So the whole image was on this tiny little part of the paper just because I had selected the wrong size. So always watch out for those things. Okay, so after you have printed out your images, the next thing to do is to cut them out. So they should already be sized perfectly. So if you feel comfortable with a pair of scissors, you can just go ahead and cut as perfectly as you can right along those lines. That's what I usually do because I am I just like scissors, I don't know. but. Um, if you have a giant paper trimmer, which I don't, but if you do, you can stick this in a paper trimmer and do it that way. Or another option is if you're just nervous about not getting the perfect lines, you can take this um, with a ruler and an X-Acto knife and trim it that way. So just go ahead and trim these out and then you'll be ready to add them to your scrapbook. Next, I wanna talk about how you make a grid out of one photo. This is actually a lot easier than it looks. So all that you do is take a nine by 12 image, cause this is, um, these three by three squares are adding up to be nine by 12 inches total. And so you would just take this and you would just cut the three by three squares out of the whole thing. So you could just use a trimmer or an X-Acto knife and just cut the whole thing into three by three squares. You don't have to print it in any special way. 
Okay, so for this last section, I just wanna talk a little bit about why I love my wide format printer. So a wide format printer is a printer that prints larger than a standard size. So a standard piece of paper is eight and a half by 11, which if I use that, it would be too small to make a full page nine by 12 photo for my scrapbook. Um, also, if you use like a 12 by 12 scrapbook, you would need a wide format printer to get a photo that big. So a wide format, the one that I have is 13 by 19 inches, and I do use it to print these big photos, but I also use it to print all the little photos, just how I was showing you earlier, um, by resizing them and putting them all on one giant piece of paper and printing them out. So some of the things I love to do with it, oh, <laughs> one is to make these giant photos. So large full page photos are a big deal to me. I like to mix them throughout my book. And um, to me, that's what makes a beautiful scrapbook is having some really big photos. I just feel like it shows them off and kind of highlights your favorite moments. Um, another thing that I love about having a printer, and this is something that you can't do just by printing your photos at like, um, I don't know, the grocery store or whatever. Um, is that you can make these collages. So this page is made completely out of Instagram photos from our honeymoon, and I resized them all small and then collaged them all together on one big piece and then printed it out together. So I love being able to do that because sometimes you don't have one amazing photo from an event, but you have a bunch of special little moments and you can put them all together and it really creates a beautiful page. And then the last thing that I love um, to have a printer for is to add text to my photos before I print them out. So like for the entry, or sorry, the, what would you call it? The first page of this one year, um, our first year of marriage scrapbook, I um, did some handwriting on it with my tablet and then I also did some writing with a font and I did all of that in Photoshop before I printed out the image. So those are just some really cool things that you can do with a wide format printer. So thanks for going with me through all of the information about my wide format printer and how I print my photos for my scrapbooks. If you have any questions at all, just leave them for me in the comments and I will be there to answer them and chat with you. So thanks for watching.